I just got back from the gorgeous, heart-wrenching, beautiful, amazing, spectacular, perfect Across the Spider-Verse film. And I cannot wait to dig into this mystery box filled with Spider-Verse figures. Okay, so here's the box, and as you can see, this is just a hodgepodge of all of my different Spider-Verse figures. So let's actually take some out, go through them in order, because I want to tell the story of this movie without giving away a bunch of spoilers, but also, at the end, I want to show you some other figures from my collection that I think need to be in the future waves of Spider-Verse figures. Let's do it. Okay, it's a lot, but let's start out with the figures that Hasbro made from Into the Spider-Verse. And we're going to start with some of the basic lines that were actually made for kids because they contained characters that we didn't get anywhere else, like the giant spider robot. So we got this like huge, I mean, it's like almost... 10 inches tall spider robot in the original Spider-Verse line, and it's pretty cool. And it came with the driver, I think, is her name Annie? I, I have a hard time, or Penny, Penny Parker. And this is arguably the weakest sculpted figure in the entire line, because that looks absolutely nothing like the character. But a cool addition that we got in the kids' line was the only version so far that we've gotten of Scorpion. And it's actually a pretty sweet mechanical scorpion. I mean, he's got this awesome articulated tail coming over the top. He's got that animated look. I mean, it's 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 pretty cool. Now, let's get into some of the main characters that we got in both versions, both the kid version that was like really simplified, simplified articulation, simplified sculpting, and then what we got as Marvel Legends. And you can see there's there's a pretty significant difference between the two. Honestly, this one has, it's maybe more consistent with the animated look, this Prowler figure, and it's really good. And, you know, no spoilers, but Prowler does make a presence in Across the Spider-Verse. I do like, though, the Marvel Legends, even though, ah, uh, you know what? I don't know that I do like it as much. I mean, it has more detail. It's certainly got more of his electronic tech, but the musculature, I'm sure they borrowed these parts from other Marvel Legends figures. I actually think I like the simpler kid version better. I think it fits the animation better than what we've seen. Let's take a look at some of the other characters and see how they stand up to the same comparison, uh, beginning with Gwen. So here's the kid version of Gwen. Really kind of nice. She does have the detail, but it's not painted. The web lines aren't painted on the inside of her hoodie. She came with like a little web accessory. And of course, they don't have articulation at the knees, but they do have uh, the sweet ballet shoes. Something I did not notice the first time that I watched Spider-Verse, but I, I, I picked it up when I saw the movie today, is in her first scene, she puts on her ballet slippers. And when she comes in, she actually lands on point, which I thought was a really nice thing and a, a little nod that I do pay attention to my wife talking about her dancing history and what it means to be on point with ballet. Now here's the, the Marvel Legends Gwen, and this thing is just fabulous. I mean, that head sculpt of Gwen from the cartoon is, is just brilliant. Now she has the ballet slippers, but because she doesn't have as much of the musculature, I think she fits in really, really well with the animated line. So I definitely am going to say that this is a superior figure for Gwendy. Pete, I actually have two of these. These are the same figure. This is the kid version. I love it. I mean, it's so simple. You know, these were cheap. These were significantly cheaper than Marvel Legends. Granted, again, they don't have much articulation below the waist, but for a toy for a kid, that looks just like Peter B. Parker from Spider-Verse. But we did get this just absolute loser. They captured everything in this Marvel Legends. The the different shoes, the the tummy coming out. There are no ab muscles there. He's got his jacket. He's got his drink. And he just has that kind of half smirk befuddled Peter B. Parker. Now we're going to see a lot more Peter B. Parkers, but I got to give the Hasbro team credit with their Marvel Legends. This one's really, really good. We did get the Spider-Man Noir. He has his hat. He's got his gun. It's a lot of reused parts. But, you know, hey, it, it, it definitely works. And, uh, you know, brief cameo, but he was in the new film. Of course, you've got my favorite, the Spider-Ham. And, you know, I don't remember what this may be like a hero clicks or something. I'm not even sure what this came from. But I love he's able to pull his hammer from the Hammer universe. And he just has that 
He's got that grin. You can see it. He's got the grin on his face as he's coming in with his giant hammer. And then this is the one that came in the Marvel Legends line. And it's nice. Uh, we'll see some imports here in a minute. It, zero articulation. Just a ball-jointed neck, but that was about it. But how about the star of the show from the very first movie? Here is Miles Morales. And this is the kid version. Really, really simple. I don't love that head. It's almost like they just kind of took a head from a different Miles and, and popped it on this body. Good frame. You know, he definitely has the, the frame. And of course, it's got the unique spray paint features of his Spider logo, but they really did an even better job with the Legends version. Now, I think this is borrowing a head from another figure, but where they did so well was the spray paint look. You know, that's hard to do to get it to have that organic spray paint look. Um, it doesn't quite capture the fact that this was an original red and blue suit underneath. We saved that for this version. So this version with a very boyish looking Miles, which is appropriate for the very first film, does capture the fact that that's a red and blue Spidey suit that he's painted black with the spray paint red. He's got his dual coats, which is, that's nice for, for a mass market figure. Uh, again, there's the red and blues. He's got his Air Jordans on, his long baggy shorts. This is a solid, solid figure. We got really good Marvel Legends figures, but we're about to take a look at the imports and see what the next level was. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. There's a fair amount of cash laid out on these import across the Spider-Verse or into the Spider-Verse figures. So let's go through them and see what we've got, beginning with Penny Parker and her giant robot. And this actually, you can switch the head out to more of a happy face head. You can see it's much, much more uh, cartoon accurate, way better articulation. But the area where this one totally excels is with Penny herself. Now, granted, she's not articulated. She has like a little stand that you can put into her, you know, Hello Kitty-ish book bag there. But at least she actually looks like Penny Parker. So big step up when it comes to Penny Parker. I'm not sure that I feel the same about Gwen. I think this is the Mafex Gwen Stacy. Uh, I don't know that I, I, I think I've got the Sentinel one on order, but this is the one that we have. One cool thing is that's a magnet. So her hood stays on because it's magnetized. Now, great, great, you know, thin frame. Again, she's got her ballet shoes. She can get into some gorgeous articulated poses because of this advanced articulated scheme. Really, really nice. But when you look at the Mafex alternate head, I don't think that's better than the Marvel Legends one. So for the price, I think you got to pick Marvel Legends over this import Mafex one. Let's talk Miles. I've got Miles from two different companies. I have the Mafex Miles, and it's arguably the most disappointing of all the import figures. There's something just kind of flat and without personality about his face. Yeah, granted, he's got a really good representation of his suit. He's got much better uh, Jordans on here. Uh, he's really thin. I like the soft goods. Those are pretty cool. But this figure is ridiculously fragile. And by that, I mean, look, he's broken at the elbow. I mean, I think this thing cost a hundred bucks for it to break without even really being played with is pretty disappointing. What was not disappointing is Upstart Company Sentinel. I don't know that much about this company, but they are in the action figure game with the Spider-Verse figures, and they are stupendous. Look at how great this Miles is. I mean, so much more character to that face. It really brings out his, his youthful boyhood exuberance. His, his coats, the two layers are like moving. You can see kind of how it, it has that sense of motion. And he came with a ton of different hand accessories. Here he is with his spray paint can. And again, great, great articulation and even better Air Jordans on. So this is a, this is the best Miles figure that we've gotten so far. And it's not even close. And they also gave us 
an invisible version. So I put the alternate head sculpt on this one where he's got kind of like the squinty eye. You know, Miles was just figuring out his powers in Into the Spider-Verse. He is a much more fully formed superhero in Across the Spider-Verse, and therefore he utilizes this power a significant amount more. So this figure has now become an even bigger favorite in my collection because of that. Look at how great they did. There's even like a notch in the back of his thigh so that you can get that full bend of his legs. Just, just buttery articulation. And that carries on with the next Sentinel figure that we're going to look at as well. But before we get to the, oh, 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 oh. So here is the Sentinel no, not Sentinel. This is the Mafex, uh, Peter Porker, the Spectacular Spider-Ham. I think he came with Gwen. It's okay. It, again, has just minimal, minimal articulation. I, for me, we're still looking for the definitive Spider-Ham, and hopefully we'll get it with Across the Spider-Verse Part 2. Now, I actually bought two different ones of the Mafex and the Sentinel. And the reason why is because they came with so many accessories and different ways that you could display them. I, that one figure wasn't enough. And let's start with a really terrific Peter B. Parker from Mafex. So Mafex did a great job, just like we saw with Marvel Legends, with having a really kind of rough and tumble Peter B. Parker. This time I went with the, the mask halfway on. He definitely has that kind of bigger dad bod belly going on. They probably did it best with Mafex. The soft goods actually really do work with this figure. He's got the different shoes. But the nice thing is you can actually take all of these soft goods off and you get a pretty terrific just regular Spider-Man. I, I went with the more thin like Ditko eyes. You can see they're a little bit asymmetrical, which is pretty cool. His articulation is what you would expect from you know one of these import figures it's really really good but as good as this figure is it actually doesn't hold a candle to the next one which is the sentinel spider-man now we got two different versions of this guy we did get the peter b parker version with his goofy, goofy look on his face. He's got his glasses. He's drinking his coffee. He came with an extra abdominal piece so that he could have his little bit of a pot belly, his little dad bod action going on there. But this is the only figure where we actually got a head sculpt of the blonde-haired Peter Parker from Miles' original universe. And, oh, yep, yeah, that's how you switch out the abdomen, just like that. Pops right back in. So that was one of the reasons why I ended up getting two of these because I needed to be able to show our two different Peters and the only way to do it was like this. Now, I did an entire video on this figure because when you get it into this form where he's got the more abdominal ripped musculature, he's got a more standard spidey head, this is arguably one of the greatest Spider-Man figures ever. To, to talk about how incredible this articulation is, I mean, I could go on for days. Sure, he's got lots of accessories. He has things like these terrific web hands. He's got, you know, kind of a surprised head. He has a different Peter B. Parker head. I mean, he's got all of that stuff, but it's just this basic Spider-Man and the way that he moves and the, the poses that you can get him into and just the flow of it. I mean, look at how those knee joints double back. Again, He's got the cut thighs so that you can get his calves all the way back, but it makes for just these unbelievable Ditko McFarlane type poses. This is this is one of the finest Spider-Man figures ever made. I, I will stand by that. And a great representation from Into the Spider-Verse. But what we really want to see, we want to see the figures from across the Spider-Verse. So let's bust those out and take a look at those next. Hey, if y'all are enjoying this video, let me know in the comments, but please keep them spoiler free. We're getting really close to 50,000 subscribers here at Carbon Scoring, so if you want the best in comics, history, and action figures every week, consider hitting that subscribe button. Now, back to the figures. Okay, I'm not going to give any spoilers. I'm not going to give any spoilers. I promise I'm not going to give any spoilers, but oh, this movie was so good. Guys, if you haven't seen it, you have got to go see it. It is absolutely, it's two hours and like 20 minutes, two hours and 40 minutes, something like that. It could have gone on for 10 hours and I would have never stopped enjoying it. It was 
absolutely brilliant. And we'll talk about some of the art and just the just the absolute animation just phenomenon that this thing has become. But but I've got the new Spider-Verse figures here. Let's kind of piece through them and, and take a look. And we'll start with our main guy, with my main man, Miles Morales. And so I actually bought like the the six pack of of the kids figures and I'm I'm really glad I did cuz they're they're super fun. So here is Miles in his new costume. You can see it's got a little bit more blue. His mask is blue, or at least it's kind of got blue here on the front instead of black. And what you can really pick up on a lot during the movie is the red stripe that runs down the side of his costume. Now, I mentioned that Miles is older in this film, and so he's got a little bit better grip of his powers, and that includes his Venom Blast. So I'm glad that this kid figure actually came with a Venom Blast accessory because that's going to be fun. That's going to be fun for kids. But let's take a look at the Marvel Legends version of Miles and see just how terrific that one is. And wow, so much more detail. So unlike that previous Miles Morales that we saw from the first movie, this one is truly custom built for this film. So you can see the the, the red stripe, but you can also see all of the tech. Miles makes a comment that, that he made himself a new suit, and so that explains why he does have this totally new one. But it does have that gradation of color over the mask as well as here on the abdomen, but still that very familiar, uh, you know, spray paint looking spider logo. Really, really cool. And thankfully, this figure did come with an alternate head. And I think it's really important to point out. Miles looks different. You know, this movie is, I guess, about a year or a year and a half into the future. And so when you go from, you know, say 13 to 15, your your body's going to change. And Miles is taller. His face is leaner. He looks more like a young adult than like a little kid. And they managed to capture that with this head sculpt. Really, really well done by the Marvel Legends team. Now, for me... As a child of the 80s, there was very few things that I was excited for as seeing the Spot on the big screen. So Spot was actually in one of the very first comics that I ever read. And that cover to Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man 99, is brilliant. It is one of the coolest covers. And it shows the potential that Spot has. But what's so funny is when Spot first appeared, Peter uh, in the comics treated him like a joke. And they maintain that. They they stay true to the Spot's origin, even to the point of how he was first defeated in the comics is how he was first defeated in the movie. But then they take it to a whole nother level. And that's one of the things that I absolutely love about MCU movies and these Spider-Verse movies is they take the core ideas that came from the comics and then they make them better. They they but they they're they're still true to them. And of course, this is the kid version of Spot, which has this great play feature where if you squeeze his legs, his fist come through one of his dimensional portals, which is really, really sweet. Now, of course, he made it in the Legends line. This one is a more normal body looking one. This one has this really, really goofy body that is actually kind of what he looked like right at the beginning of the film. So it's definitely screen accurate and they get some good jokes on spot at the beginning, but uh, I'm not going to say that he has the last laugh, but let me just tell you, his story is not done yet. Now, I love this. Uh, just having a spot in my hands is like a dream come true, but I want a comic accurate 616 spot. This this misshapen body is just not quite what uh, what I'm looking for, but I love it. But I mean, and it's accurate, but I want us to go now and give me a real spot. I have a custom uh, it's cool, but I want a real one. So hook us up, Hasbro. We need a real spot in the line. Uh, one of the most badass characters is Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman. And this figure is just so cool. I ran a, a survey, a, po a poll on our channel, and I asked what character you were most excited about seeing. And dead last, with like virtually zero votes was Spider-Woman. And let me tell you, y'all are wrong. She is so cool. I mean, anybody 
that can rock this hair has got to be awesome. And this figure's super sweet. The clear goggles where you can see her eyes, that little yellow triangle, which is a throwback to the classic Spider-Woman costume with the red and black. And they don't really go into it, but she has a very specific shape to her body that when I was first looking at this figure, I was like, man, is she pregnant? Well... Maybe so, and they didn't shy away from that. I mean, we got, like, legit baby bump, but I know that you guys initially weren't excited about this figure. Let me tell you something. You're going to change your mind after you see the movie, and I think she's going to play an even bigger role in Part 2 Beyond the Spider-Verse. All right, who's next? Oh, oh, let's go here. Let's go with Spider-Punk. So Spider-Punk made his appearance in the comics Spider-Verse storyline that was written by Dan Slott, and he was instantly a huge pop hit. Like, everybody loved him, so much so that he got his own Marvel Legends figure, and it is great. If you watched my Spider-Man tournament, where I took 64 different Marvel Legends figures and competed them against each other to see what was the greatest Spider-Man figure, you know that Spider-Punk went a long way, as he should, because it's a great, great character. This is the kid version. He doesn't have any kind of articulation at the knees, but he still has the, the terrific detailing of the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man that's like the CBGB logo from the famous New York City punk bar. And, you know, he's got some nice spikes and he's really super thin, but as nice as this one is, it, and it, came, it came with a guitar. So, you know, he's got just kind of a plastic molded guitar. It does not hold a candle to the Marvel Legends one. Oh my gosh, the level of detail on this thing from his suspenders hanging down to all the laces on his giant boots to individually painted with multiple colors on each one of these buttons, all of the little spikes and rivets across every aspect, all of them have individual paint on them. And of course, you've got the rough look of his webs. Now, one of the things that I have to mention about Spider-Punk from the movie is I read a couple of years ago when they were doing the pre-production for Across the Spider-Verse, the directors and the producers said, listen, we completely reinvented animation with Into the Spider-Verse. So for the next movie, we've got to take it the next step. And one of the ways that they did that was by having each character have their own unique animation style. And the thought behind that was they're all from different universes. And so they're all going to look slightly different. And one of the most extreme examples of that in the film was Spider-Punk. And if they had tried to make a figure the way that he was animated on the movie, it, it wouldn't work. So they had to go with a more traditional kind of look to this figure, but it's still so good. We got the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. We've got all of the stickers. This looks like my skateboard from the 80s. If you were any kind of 80s kid, you knew you filled your skateboard up with the coolest stickers you possibly could. Well, here's Spider-Punk totally copying that aesthetic, and he's even got a pick in his hand, but he is just absolutely rocking out, and you're going to be surprised when you meet Spider-Punk in this movie. And again, he is somebody who played a crucial role in this part one, but I believe is set up for even bigger things in the next one. Let's kick over. Let's kick over to the giant cyborg Spider-Man. Now, this is a pretty cool toy, right? Let's just talk about it as a toy. If you're a kid and you ignore the fact that I think this thing was 50 damn dollars or something ridiculous like that, look at how crazy cool this is. You know, with like the cybernetic eye and the giant Mad Max shoulder pads. He's got a freaking Gatling gun with spinning spikes for an arm. You got like Wolverine type claws coming off of here, giant spikes on his boots, chains everywhere. I wish that I could tell you more about this character. I wish that I learned more about them in Across the Spider-Verse, but I didn't. And I'm just going to leave it at that. It is a very toyetic toy. Of course, it's priced for collectors only. And out of the literal hundreds of characters that could have been made, this one turns out to be kind of an interesting choice. So 
see the movie. Let me know in the comments what you think. Please, no spoilers in the comments, though, at least for the first few weeks, because I really want everybody to enjoy this the way that I did, which was totally spoiler free. And it was just so, so terrific. All right. Who's next? Let's talk about Pete. So uh, I did. So I bought that. Like I said, I bought the five pack and uh, and they had a Peter in it. And I'm fairly certain I've already put it back in the box. I'm fairly certain this is exactly the same as the Peter that we got with the last one. Cool little web shooter. Great toy. Love it. I, we've got to get kids buying toys. Like we've got to have toys that are available for kids prices that look like Spider-Man that get them into this hobby so that it continues to survive and thrive. And it's toys like this that really are going to help to make that happen. So I love it. I love that. Here is my girl, Gwen. Now you talk about a linchpin of this film. Spider Gwen is just truly amazing. And Marvel Legends once again crushed it with a gorgeous, perfect, Gwen head sculpt. They changed her hair. You know, she still has that gimmick where it's shaved on the side where Miles got his hand stuck on it. But here we've got the, the great pink highlights that come through and through. Little bit of change to the gloves, I think. She also came with an alternate head with hoods. She is not wearing her ballet slippers throughout the majority of the film. She's got these chucks and they're a little bit of a plot point. And we'll have to see exactly how far they go with that as we get into the second, the second movie beyond the Spider-Verse. So here is a terrific Gwen Stacy who, you know, this is still a Miles Morales movie, but I think you could definitely argue she is the heart of this film. So this is a very, very Gwen-centric movie and you will love it. I, I, no matter what you think, you will absolutely love it because of that. Now we got my main man, Pete, and I think there's a lot of reuse here with this one. You know, it'd be nice if the web lines were painted in. He basically just has his pants. There's some stuff going on with Peter in this movie that I understand why they couldn't come out with how he really looked in the film, because that would be way too many spoilers. But you also can't have a line of Spider-Man toys without freaking Spider-Man in it. So, you know, this is kind of what we got. It's a cop out. I I'm not going to lie. When I, when I go back and I rewatch this movie, you know, Peter B continues to be a vital part of this film, but this figure is a bit of a cop out from where we came from on that. Now I've got a couple of spot accessories. Here's Miles poking out through one of the dimensional portals and there's there's a few others. They those were really cool. They come on a stand. I think I knocked the stand off. Yeah, here it is. You can put this like on a stand and set it up so it looks like Miles is poking out. The fight scenes with Spot are an absolute comic fan's dream. You know, it's something that you could not do a fight scene with the Spot with live action. You just, you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it with the pace and the frenetic nature and, and the laughs and just all of it. They crush it. They absolutely crush it in this movie. Now I saved my favorite for last and I have a long standing affinity for Spider-Man 2099, 20, 20, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. He was the, the very first letter I ever had published in a Marvel comic was in Spider-Man 2099, and so he's always going to be just a, a super special character to me. This is the kid version. This is the one that came in like the, the six-pack, and it's I'm super glad I got it because it's different from the retail version in that it's translucent plastic. You can see how the light shines through it, and he's, he's kind of got some tech base to him, and so this really does kind of bring out a different part of the movie that the regular figure didn't have. This thing is good, man. It's got the bigger broader proportions. It has terrific paint and detail for an $11 figure. You know, the regular figures in this line were only like 11 bucks. He does come with uh, an accessory that sort of shows sort of how his web powers kind of work. They're more of like an electric type of thing, but this thing is pretty sweet. And as sweet as it is, it's still not as good as the Marvel Legends one. So I, I wanted to see the portrayal of Spidey 2099 in this film is one of the things that I was looking forward to the most. And I was not let down because Miguel O'Hara has a very different personality than all the witty Peter Parkers and spider Gwens that are out there. And they capture that and they're true to that. And I know there's a lot of like, Oh, he's going to be the bad guy. You know, complex characters 
aren't all good or bad. And that's what they do with Spidey 2099. They also do something brilliant with his costume. You can see here in the comics, he, he wore like a Mexican Day of the Dead costume. That was where he got his costume from. But here they've taken that skull motif that was on his comics costume, kept it, but converted it into a spider. So it's much more spideretic in this version. You still have the look of that skull that, that brings out all that 2099. But look, it's actually a spider coming down. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And I love the, the transition of his cape. That's something that makes him different, that makes his costume different from all the other Spidey costumes. He's got these giant things. He, I don't think he came with a lot of alternate hands. I'd have to go back and look. He doesn't really have the claw fingertips. They're in the movie, though. So, you know, the things that you love about Spidey 2099 are all in there. And again, he's going to be one of the showstoppers as we move forward in this story. Now, let me show you a couple of other things that I actually got at the theater. So I suppose because we went to a premiere, they were handing out these really cool collector cards at the theater. So you got one of Spider-Man, a really sweet action shot of Gwen, everybody's favorite, Spider-Woman, and somebody who must, must make the next series, Spider-Man India. The scenes that he were in, was in were so crucial and absolutely brilliantly you know, animated. Again, he has a completely different animation look from any of the other characters. This costume looks so great and would come across as such a great toy. Hopefully, we're going to get a figure of him pretty soon. But there were a couple little cameos that I'm going to just briefly show you that if you don't want any spoilers, you can go ahead and watch another one of my videos right now. But if you do, check these out. All right, no comments. I'm just going to put these down. Got to go see the movie. I hope you guys enjoyed this romp through the Spider-Verse. Please go see this movie. It is so great. And tell me what you thought of it. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think of these figures. Do you, do you agree with my takes on them? What was your favorite part of the movie? And as always, give me a like. Hit subscribe for the very best in comics, history, and action figures. Subscribe to Carbon Scoring.